Hello guys and welcome back to a new episode of the Architects 3D Pin Mega series. For those who don't know the project, the Architects 3D Pin Mega is a big size and industrial quality 3D printer that I'm designing and building step by step from scratch along this series here at Architects 3D Pin. This video is only being possible thanks to my Patreon supporters that help me keep going month to month and the amazing sponsors of the Architects 3D Pin Mega that you can see on screen. In the last video I gave you an update on the Mega and fixed all the issues that the printer had at this point and I also show you the parts that will form the y-axis of the printer. Well, so in today's episode we're going to assemble it, what will get us the two dimensions of the printer completely built. So to start, first of all I'm going to remove the x-axis bridge from the top of the frame of the Mega. This way we'll get this great base structure to start building. And to this base, we're going to start attaching the four parts I showed in the last video, two on each side. Before continuing guys, I just wanted to present you today's sponsor, PCB Way. because if you are watching this video, you probably are a passionate maker and a tech enthusiast. If that's true, you're lucky to be here because PCB Way has organized a fourth PCB design contest which you can apply with your great projects. There are mainly two things of entries. One is IoT or Internet of Things, which will include home automation, wearable or other interesting projects, and the other one is robotics, which could include from smart cars to drones or other automated projects. And they also give you the possibility to apply with any other thing. You can apply till November the 30th, and the winners will be announced on December 13th. Prices are very good, but even if you don't achieve one of the big prices, you will get an ESP32 board just for participating. So guys, hurry up and take this opportunity to share your nice projects and win great prices through the link that you will find down in the description. Okay, so we are going to attach all the printed parts, but we will attach them only once we have installed the great hewing railings that Damon CNC provided for this project. By the way, you will find the link for the online store down in the description. We'll attach the Hewen railings using these M4 bolts and the T-slot nuts provided by Synerges. So once we unwrap the profiles, we'll use the M4 bolts and the T-slot nuts that you are watching by inserting them from the top and grabbing the nuts inside the aluminium extruded profiles at the bottom. An easy way to proceed that I found is to insert the nut in place just like so, putting it straight with the help of a screw or an allen key, and then put the profile with the bolt inserted in place on top, tightening it just a little. Now we can move the profile. So what I did is to count the holes in the hewing rail, in our case 11, so I inserted 11 nuts in place and straightened them with the help of an allen key. At this point we just have to start moving the profile and insert the balls from top. Once we are done with all the bolts, we'll have the hewing railing attached to the structure of the metal. For now I'm not going to tighten the bolts, since probably we'll need to adjust something later on. Ok, so once we are done with the left hand side rail, we're going to repeat the same process with the right hand side hewing railing. Well, so at this point, we have the rails where the y-axis skates will slide on installed. And remember that we didn't tighten the bolts yet. 
Now yes, it's time to finally install our 3D printed parts. They will be held in place thanks to more T-slot nuts, as you can see here, and also here. The bolts will be inserted as you can see, three on top, two at the back, and finally one at the bottom. In this case a little bit easier, since as you can see we can insert the nuts from the end of the profile just like so. Once the holes are aligned with the nuts, we'll insert the bolts with the washers just like this. The two at the back, the three at the top, and finally the one at the bottom, getting this nice result. Now, as always, we're going to repeat the same process in the left-hand side. Now, you will normally think that we are going to install the front 3D printed part of the axis, right? But no, there is a very important step that we need to do first. And it's going to be to carefully insert the human skates that we put together back in the episode 10. So we'll place it in front of the Hewin profile and we're going to carefully slide it in place without removing the black plastic protector beforehand since if we remove it and we lose a couple balls we'll be in a big trouble. Alright, so that was one side and now we're going for the other one. At this point, as you can see, the skates can move freely on top of the railings. Now yes, it is finally time to install the front 3D printed parts. As you can see, we'll just slide it in place just like so. We'll have to move it to align the holes of the design and insert the nuts. That's why I told you not to tighten the hewin railings yet. Once we have inserted the nuts, we'll proceed with the bolts as you can see. Next, how not, we're going to repeat the same process on the other side. Okay guys, so now we have all the plastic parts of the y-axis installed in place. Now we're going to start installing the moving parts, and for that we're going to start with the belt tensioners, that have more or less the same design that the ones on the x-axis. Each of them will be formed by the 3D printed parts, a 30mm M3 bolt, a washer and two nylon nuts. So the same way that the last time, we'll insert the bolt with the washer from the inside, and we'll put the nylon nut at the end. We'll do that with the two tensioners, and once done, with a bit of patience, we'll insert the nylon nut all the way through, getting this result. Next step will be to install on them the GT2 idlers that I have right here. So once again, with a lot of patience, we'll insert the bolt, washer, idler, washer, and finally the nylon nut on the other side. Finally, we'll tighten everything together, but make sure you don't put a lot of pressure since the idler has to be able to spin. So once assembled, we'll insert the idler in place, and from the bag insert the washer and the nylon nut that will allow us to tension the belt. Now you just have to insert it a little, since we'll tension it once the belt is in place.
Alright, so here is the second tensioner installed. As you can see, the design fits just perfect, allowing the skate to move until the end of the rail without crashing with the tensioner. Ok, so we have reached quite far in this episode and I'm running out of time. We'll finish the y-axis in the next episode that will go live next week, probably on Wednesday. The links for the STL files of the components used in this episode will be as always down in the description of the video. And guys, I just wanted to ask you to share this video in social media, groups, etc. since it is quite hard to run a channel like this and especially after two years of inactivity. Finally, a huge shout out to our Patreon supporters for making this channel possible. Please consider joining them to make Architects 3D be bigger. And guys, see you in the next video.